to another training video. We, uh, again, it's one of the videos where we're getting her used to the saddle. So this was the first time I kind of put the, the poles into a square to give us something else to focus on. Um, so as you can see, we're starting quite simple, but not. I didn't want to just do the square poles in terms of just, you know, over one way, over another way. I also wanted to incorporate transitions. So this is a challenge for her that we've never really done. We've never tried to incorporate three elements that she'll find challenging. So one is listening, two is pole work, and three being the saddle. But it works for her because it means she can't get that worked up about something being on her back. She has other things to concentrate on. So we started the session quite simply, just walk and trot, and each time she only is supposed to do the transition within the square. One of the other things I wanted to do is to kind of gain her concentration with not just assuming which direction to go in. So we're using as much space as we can, which again is teaching her to build up her stamina a little bit because she's not the fittest horse. And then we're saying, okay, one time we'll go this direction and then you transition and then we go another way and then you have to come over the poles this way. You have to apologise, she does stop quite often when I have to sort myself out in terms of the rope because very often I get tangled. She doesn't really like to do proper circles so then at one point I have to keep letting the rope go and then suddenly she'll kind of come in, come in a bit too quick. So downhill again is one of her real big problems with the saddle, which is why it's good for her to have a like have a change that it's not just about going downhill, she has to move over poles as well. So although it's difficult to start with for her, it helps her really gain confidence and that way she can move more freely with the saddle and then when we get to the riding stage she should be a bit safer. See, so that little trot there that she just did, that was her assuming what I'm going to ask her to do. And then we incorporate some standing transitions. And in all honesty, because this was the first time she'd ever done that, I was very impressed that she listened every single time. And after we did it quite a while on the one rain, we obviously had to go do it on the next one. Her, her stop transition there wasn't great, but technically it was within, it, like, it was within the square. So, I'm happy enough with that. Using a lunge whip is really helpful for me because it is just like an extension of the arm and when she tries to quickly cut me off the other way and switch reins, it just helps me say, no, 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 you're going this way. But as you can see, I, I don't really raise it, I just keep it behind her so that she knows she's supposed to keep going. And you can see immediately our problems are with straightness. So she's assuming what she needs to do. And I don't stand for it, I say, no, we're gonna do that again until we get it right. And she's a little bit moody about it. But it's important because it shows up where our issues are. So if I was just lunging her, I wouldn't really see that she's not properly listening to me. So that's why I settled for the walk because I was concentrating more on the straightness. So although it still wasn't ideal, at least she didn't go over the wrong pole. So if you do something like this with your horse, just remember to take your time and take it easy with them. Um, but also to be firm with what you expect from them. So as long as you know your horse's capabilities, you know how far you can push them. So if you have to keep repeating the same thing and they're not getting it, then try and change it up a little bit. So you can see once we're happy with the straightness, we say, okay, we'll move on to the next thing. And again, she's still not, not quite getting it straight on that rein, which is interesting because the other way, she had no problem. So this is what she's not used to. It's instead of just go, like lunging in a circle, I'm also saying, okay, now quickly you're going to have to go back down over these poles and then back around. But I 
the uh, the lun drawing is attached to a bit, but as you can see, I very rarely put any tension on it. When there is tension, it is just to ask her to move the other way. So again, you can see she decided to cut through the corner because earlier she knocked the pole and I didn't push it back, so there was a tiny little gap which she decided to go through. Yeah, we say we're not doing that because she knows what she's supposed to do at this point, it's just laziness that she's not doing it. And then you can see we're happy, we've got the proper trot, we've got the nice straightness, and we can carry on with the exercise. As you can see this time it's not just about transitions and now we're building up the stamina and saying I want you to go this way and I want you to stay in trot which is quite hard for her because again she has to focus on multiple things but this is what was brilliant that she was happy to trot downhill mostly like she was quite enthusiastic so though she's a little bit moody about it I was happy to leave it there because she did do really well so thanks for watching and join us next time.